Okay, so today we're diving into something uh, pretty cool, I think. You know those Kawasaki Corleo robots? Everyone's been talking about their AI and how they uh, almost seem to have emotions and stuff. Right, right. But we wanted to go a bit deeper into something even more uh, basic, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. Just how fast can this thing actually move? Like mm -hmm. across different types of ground, you know? Because if it's going to be used for real work, you know, like they're saying search and rescue or patrolling farms and things. Absolutely. If you need to get somewhere quickly and cover a lot of areas, speed becomes a big fact. I mean, in a disaster zone, for instance. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're digging into. How fast is the Corleo in a bunch of different places? We've got some really cool data from speed trials they did. Eight different terrains, actually. Not just like, you know, a parking lot and a grassy field. We're talking like... Mud, sand, rocky trails, even snow and ice. And, you know, we love a good comparison here. Of course, gotta see how it stacks up. So we'll be looking at how it compares to, well, stuff with wheels, obviously. Yeah. But also, get this, some animals too. Oh, wow, okay. That's interesting. I'm curious about that. Some unexpected results, I'm sure. You'll see. But first, probably good to get those specs in mind, right? So people can really picture it. Mm. Corleola weighs like 165 kilograms. That's... uh pretty hefty yeah it's no lightweight stands about 1.5 meters tall about my height and kawasaki says the top speed is 25 kilometers per hour but that's on like a flat surface right ideal conditions yeah and in actual use they're figuring more like 10 to 14 kilometers per hour on average makes sense given the variety of terrains it's designed for now the really interesting bit i think is the power source it's using a hydrogen fuel cell Hmm. which if you're not super familiar, that means it's got way more energy stored than a battery of the same size. Yeah, around 150 watt hours per kilogram, which is a pretty impressive energy density, means it can operate for much longer than robots relying on traditional batteries. Yeah, like way longer. So you're not constantly stopping to recharge. Right, which is critical for those long duration tasks, like you mentioned, patrolling or search and rescue. And then there are the legs themselves. I mean, four of them adaptive they call them made of carbon titanium and they've got these shock absorbers built right in yeah those shock absorbers are crucial for handling uneven terrain especially at speed but it's not just like dumb bouncing around mm. it's got this whole system they call stability ai right real-time balance and predictive movement yeah. so it's not just reacting to a wobble it's anticipating it yeah like it knows it's about to step on something wonky and adjust before yeah. it even happens so from the get-go i was thinking okay this isn't built just for like max speed on a perfect surface it's got to be able to move over anything exactly it seems more about versatility and reliability across a range of conditions yeah exactly so asphalt first right got to see what it can do on the smooth stuff yeah the baseline so to speak top speed they got was 25.3 kilometers per hour a little bit faster than advertised actually impressive and average speed was still 20.6 mm. so pretty much zooming along holding that speed well and get this from zero to 15 kilometers an hour it took just 2.8 seconds that's a quick acceleration. I'd imagine that would be useful for a lot of applications. Oh, for sure. Now, for stability, they gave it a 9.5 out of 10. And recovery, like if it hits a bump or something, instant. Didn't even slow down. So on a city sidewalk, for example, it's not going to be thrown off by cracks or uneven pavement. Makes it much more reliable for things like delivery or patrols. Oh, absolutely. And they mentioned this thing called like a gallop mode. When it gets over 20 kilometers per hour, the legs spend less time on the ground. Interesting. Sounds like it's trying to minimize contact to gain more speed. Yeah, must be some fancy footwork going on there. But the point is, this thing's zippy, faster than most delivery robots, could keep up with someone on a scooter easily. Mm -hmm. So for getting around urban areas, pretty darn impressive. Yeah, really seems to excel there. Okay, so then they took it to a grassy field, bit bumpier, you know? Right, more unpredictable surface. Top speed there was 21.7 kilometers per hour. Average was 17.9. A bit slower than the asphalt, but still pretty quick. Oh yeah, still faster than most people can run, that's for sure. And they actually compared it to like a dog sprinting, which, I don't know, that gives you a visual, right? Yeah, it does paint a picture. You can imagine it bounding across a field. And they even like put patches of wet grass in there to be extra tricky. Oh wow, really putting it through its paces. But the thing adjusted in like, milliseconds changed how long its feet were on the ground lowered its center of gravity a bit didn't even trip that adaptability is key especially for natural environments where conditions can change quickly oh yeah for sure so even though it's not perfectly flat ground still super agile right maintaining control and efficiency in different conditions shows how sophisticated that stability ai is okay ready for this sand 
the bait of wheels everywhere. Yeah, not many robots do well in sand. So top speed was 12.3 kilometers per hour, average 9.6. And acceleration was the slowest so far at 4.8 seconds. You can imagine it sinking in a bit, right? Yeah, that loose surface must create a lot of resistance. And stability dipped to 7.8. But here's the thing, it didn't get stuck. Like, at all. That's huge! You see wheeled robots getting bogged down in sand all the time, so the fact that Corleo kept moving is a big deal. Oh, absolutely. They said it was whitening its stance, adjusting how hard each foot pressed down, all to maintain traction. Yeah. So maybe not breaking speed records, but compared to anything with wheels, it's like a whole new level. Yeah, it opens up possibilities for all sorts of environments that were previously inaccessible. Exactly. Okay, so then gravel. Another one that's like notoriously tough. Yeah, lots of loose shifting material. Top speed there was 16.9 kilometers per hour, average 13.5 acceleration 3.9 seconds not bad considering how unstable that surface can be right instability was 8.5 so doing pretty well but the part that really stood out to me was how they described it handling those pebbles like it was doing this predictive limb adjustment almost like it could sense where the unstable spots were before it stepped there yeah that's fascinating they compared it to mountain goats navigating tricky terrain not just reacting to a slip but thinking ahead yeah like planning its steps so it's not just about raw power it's about moving intelligently shows a really advanced level of sensory input and processing okay now for the truly messy one mud this is where things got slow no surprise there yeah mud's a real challenge for any kind of mobility top speed 9.2 kilometers per hour average 6.3 and acceleration oof 5.1 seconds, like wading through molasses, I'd imagine. I bet. Creating a ton of drag. But the cool part, it didn't get stuck. Yeah. Instead of just like churning its legs and going nowhere, it started doing this high step walk, lifting its legs way up with each step. Smart. Sacrificing some speed to keep moving forward. Yeah, like prioritizing progress over pure speed, which in a lot of real world situations makes sense. Absolutely. Sometimes just maintaining the ability to move is more critical. Okay. Ready for some truly uneven terrain. Yeah. Rocky Trails. Yes. This is where I was really impressed. Yeah, that's a tough test for any walking robot. Top speed 14.1 kilometers per hour, average 11.8. Acceleration was 4.2 seconds. Stability was a whopping 9.3. And recovery time, 0.6 seconds. Like, what? That's incredible stability for that kind of surface. I mean, imagine this thing navigating a disaster zone. Right. Huge advantage. Yeah. And they were saying it was basically scanning the ground with every step, picking the most stable spot to put his foot down. Like it's actively thinking about each foot placement. Right. And they compared it to like big cats and those ibex that climb mountains. Yeah. It was even managing little jumps over gaps. Wow. So it can handle uneven terrain where wheels would be completely useless. Totally. It really highlights how precise those leg movements are and how good its balance algorithms are. Yeah, very impressive. Okay, so then snow and ice. Now, this is where I was really curious to see how it did. Yeah, slippery surfaces are tricky for any robot. Top speed, 10.7 kilometers per hour, average 8.2. Acceleration was 4.9 seconds. Not bad, considering the lack of traction. Right, and stability was still 8.0, so holding its own pretty well. They were saying it was making tiny adjustments with its leg muscles, and it even has sensors in its toes to help it grip. Wow, that's some advanced technology. And when the snow got deeper, it would do this trot then stop thing, like move a bit, then pause to stabilize, then move again. Interesting. Seems like a good strategy for conserving energy and maintaining balance. Yeah, plus hydrogen fuel cells, they're not as affected by cold as batteries are. So it's got an advantage there too. Definitely. Some robots would really struggle in those temperatures. Okay, last one. Urban jungle time. Stairs and ramps. Ah, the ultimate test of real-world agility. On the ramps, top speed was 13.5 kilometers per hour. Stairs were slower, 7.9, which makes sense, right? Mm. Better be careful. Yeah, safety first. But stability was the highest yet, 9.7 out of 10. And recovery, less than 0.3 seconds. So basically glued to the steps. They used the term instinctive locomotion, which... I mean, watching the videos, it kind of is. Like, it pauses for a sec to scan the stairs, figures out how big they are, then confidently walks up. But going down, it's much slower, more careful. Yeah, you can see it taking its time to make sure it doesn't fall. And the really cool part, it can carry stuff up those stairs. Like, a good amount of weight. Really highlights the practicality of this design. Could be incredibly useful in an urban environment. So, okay, big question time. We've seen it on all these different surfaces. Can this thing outrun other ways of getting around? 
Well, if you compare it to wheeled robots or drones on the ground, it's pretty clear that Corleo has a big advantage on anything that isn't perfectly smooth and flat. Yeah, like once you get off the pavement, it's game over for wheels. Exactly. Some wheeled bots might be a little faster on a track, but when it comes to real-world environments, Corleo's endurance and adaptability are a game changer. But what about drones in the air? I mean, obviously it can't fly, but... True, drones are definitely faster in the air, but their flight time is usually pretty limited because of battery life. Yeah, and they can't carry much weight either. Exactly. Corleo can operate for over 10 hours on a single hydrogen refill. So for long missions or carrying heavy equipment, it's got a clear advantage. Okay, now for the comparison everyone's thinking about humans. Yeah. How does it stack up against us? Well, the data suggests that Corleo is actually faster than the average person running on most of these terrains, especially over longer distances. And on things like stairs, gravel, and mud, it really outperforms us. Yeah, because we get tired. This thing just keeps going. Right, no fatigue for robots. And the engineers at Kawasaki were really emphasizing that Corleo isn't designed to be a speed demon. It's built for endurance and adapting to different environments. Yeah, it's not about winning a sprint. It's about reliably getting the job done, no matter what the terrain is like. Exactly. So, to answer that initial question, can Corleo outrun traditional mobility platforms? I'd say sometimes on flat ground, almost always on unpredictable terrain, and absolutely when you factor in endurance and adaptability. Yeah, it's not just fast, it's just relentlessly capable. Like, this thing could probably walk through a war zone and not even break a sweat. Well, maybe not literally, but you get the idea. So, yeah, this deep dive into Corleo's speed has been pretty eye-opening. It's not just a cool-looking robot, it's a seriously impressive piece of engineering. Absolutely. We've seen how it can adapt to all sorts of obstacles, and that hydrogen power gives it the stamina to tackle some really tough tasks. And that brings us to our final thought for you. Given how adaptable Corleo is and how long it can operate, what other things could it be used for? Like, beyond the obvious stuff, rescue, agriculture, patrols... What other problems could this type of robot solve? Yeah, it really makes you think about the possibilities. As this technology keeps developing, who knows what applications we'll see. Exactly. Maybe exploring other planets. Or deep sea missions. Or, I don't know, delivering pizza in a blizzard. Yeah. The potential is huge. It definitely is. It'll be fascinating to see where this technology leads us next. Totally agree. All right, that's it for this deep dive. We'll catch you next time. See you then.